Good afternoon, one and all. Our leadership team from Manipal University, Jaipur, President Professor G.K. Prabhu, Pro President Professor Anand Sharma, Registrar Professor H. Ravi Shankar Kamath, our very distinguished panel members, Dr. Ramanan Ramanathan, Mission Director, Atal Innovation Mission, and Additional Secretary to Niti Aayog Government of India. Professor Puneet Sharma, Anchor DD National, and Technical Education Expert, and Mr. Jeet Kumar, co-founder and CEO in Time Tech Global Software Solutions Company, who will be joining us shortly. Dear participants, I welcome you all to the second webinar in the leadership webinar series, Education for Generation Z. The topic of today's webinar is Make a Dent, Sprouting Innovation and Startup. As you all know, startup ecosystem is not only bringing in a paradigm shift in the global economy, but it is also impacting evolution in the academic arena. This webinar will definitely help you to get an insight on the culture of innovation in the education system, handholding for startup and journey of an entrepreneur. The idea behind the webinar has been conceived by our pro president, Professor Anand Sharma, and is being organized by Directorate of Admissions, Manipal University, Jaipur. To begin today's program, I call upon our pro president, Professor Anand Sharma, for his welcome address and introduce our guest to the gathering. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Neetu. And on set, I would like to welcome everyone listening to this webinar and those who will listen to this webinar once it is recorded and is for everlasting, it will be there on the YouTube. It's a live telecast. On behalf of Manipal University, Jaipur, it is a pr proud privilege to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Ramanan Ramanathan, who is a mi mission director, Atal Innovation Mission, additional secretary, Niti Aayog, Government of India. Welcome, sir, and thank you for giving the time to us and to the audience who will be certainly getting benefited by your uh, deliberations and discussions today. Dr. Ramnan has a very illustrious career and has so many accolades to his career. He has been educated at IIT Bombay, University of Cambridge and Harvard Business School. These are the places where one would dream to go. As the mission director of AIM, Ramnan sir has been instrumental to date in the launch and execution of several nationwide innovations and entrepreneurship initiative resulting in 10,000 plus adult tinkering labs. This is the brainchild of Ramnan sir. Being established in schools nationwide with 5,000 plus operational and in 650 plus districts and over 2 million students having access to innovative tools and technologies like 3D printers, robotics, miniaturized electronics, do-it-yourself kits. 102 Atal incubation centers being established in university and industry fostering startups. 24 Atal New India challenges to stimulate product innovations along with ministries of India. He has been and holding in his career senior vice president Tata Consultancy Services, member board of directors Indo-US Science and Technology Forum, member board of directors Defense Innovation Organization. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big list, sir. We are honored to have you here, sir, because it is your platform. I think uh, with folded hands, I welcome you on behalf of Manipal University, Jaipur. As Mr. Jeet will join, I will have again the privilege to uh, 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 introduce to the audience to him. Thank you, Neetu. Please. Thank you, sir. I now request our president, Professor J.K. Prabhu, to say a few words about our university. Please, sir. Yeah. So good afternoon uh, to everyone, and it is also my pleasure to welcome once again uh, to this uh, very important uh, webinar, leadership webinar series, uh, Education for uh, Generation Z. And today's topic, as it is being mentioned, it is a make a dent, sprouting innovation and startup. Again, it is also my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Ramanan Ji, uh, Sri Jeet Kumar Ji, and uh, Professor Puneet Kumar Sharma ji and all other uh, uh, members uh, who are here and listening it. 
So about uh, Manipal University Jaipur in brief. So we have uh, launched this university in uh, 2011 uh, as a state private university in Rajasthan. And although it is a part of the Manipal group, which is more than about 65 years, is a known for education and healthcare. So in the Although we have started with a very small uh, uh, group of uh, students in the Faculty of Engineering, nearly about 200 students, but after operation of about uh, nine years, there are uh, more than 8,000 students in the campus. We have five different faculties, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Sciences, Faculty of Design, Faculty of Arts and Law, and Faculty of Commerce and Management. So under these uh, five different faculties, we have nearly about 60 uh, academic programs, both in undergraduate and the post-graduation. So nearly 500 uh, PhD scholars are also working in the various departments, and uh, many of them are on the multidisciplinary uh, PhD programs. And uh, in the in the the very first uh, uh, year when we started we have built this particular campus and when we built the campus we thought is slightly differently so when we have a new campus all the other experience of other manipal group campuses we took the experience and uh, developed a green campus so which is uh, an energy efficient campus and also in many other aspects that we have also incorporated. And this is the first ever education university uh, in India, which has uh, the, the green campus rating, whether it's a lead platinum uh, uh, rating as well as uh, the Graha five star rating. And we also introduce this concept for all our uh, students as well as the faculty because they must know what this green campus really means and most of the time that uh, there is a myth that whenever we think about the green campus we think that it is a very costly but this is something that which we have done it even the green campus can also be built which is an uh, 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 cost effective and this is something which is uh, very very new and we also have a, developed a particular course for the students and once they complete this particular program, so they will also be the, what do you say, the, uh, the lead platinum uh, uh, auditors. And there are many other things that which we have brought. And uh, recently the achievement, uh, we are very happy to inform all of you that in the NAC accreditation for the university, for the first time when we went for the NAC accreditation uh, under uh, the new guidelines, and we are very happy to inform that we got the A plus grade with a GPA of 3.28. And it is also very heartening to know to each one of us that we are the first university in the entire Rajasthan state uh, to get this uh, NAC uh, A plus. And uh, with the new guidelines of the UGC, uh, with this grade that uh, this university can also launch an online program. And we are also working towards that and to make one of the finest online education program along with the campus based programs and uh, having this COVID-19 and post pandemic uh, pandemic. I'm sure this online will also become more popular and uh, we are also an eligible to run, but we are very, very cautious about the quality also to bring in the online education. So many things that which we have initiated, whether it is an academic, whether it is an industry connect, or whether it is an internationalization, the alumni relations, how we wanted to do it, and how strong industry connects that we wanted to do. But the two things that I would like to inform you, which is very, very uh, close to us, whenever we change this curriculum, and there is a particular period, but when we do the curriculum change, we call something an event which is called as a curriculum conclave. We invite all the stakeholders, including the students, the alumni, the regulatory bodies, the academicians, the industry partners, and then we deliberate which curriculum would be good for us. And uh, with that recommendation, so we have launched the new curriculum framework uh, for the 2019 admission, which is being very well accepted, where there is a lot of opportunity, a lot of flexibility that we build so that the student 
can also learn something which is outside the classroom. So that is something that which we have developed and which we are focusing on the holistic development of an education along with the academic excellence and creating an opportunity and atmosphere to for learn and to move forward. The another, the second very important point, which is very, very close to this particular topic is something called as we have launched a, a, a directorate, which is called as an innovation cell. And this innovation cell, the large number of students and faculty, they constantly do some hackathons. Some of these hackathons are in a collaboration with the industry, collaboration with the state government, collaboration with the national government, and encourage the students to participate in it. And whenever, even if there is a, no hackathons, there is a lot of innovation activity which happens. And whenever this innovation happens, and if any innovation has some kind of a business plan, and then we encourage the student or a team of students to launch their own company in the form of uh, an utter incubation mission. And we are very happy that uh, in the first phase itself, our university got the recognition by uh, the Atal Incubation Mission as an, one of the Atal Incubation Center. And uh, in the first year itself, we are successful to launch about the new 11 new companies and they are also doing very well. And there is a large number of industry mentors, academic mentors are also available so that they also uh, do it. And especially there is one thing that which we have seen in the students, especially they come from Rajasthan state. So innovation and business, it is something there in their blood. So that entrepreneurship is something which is uh, very, very heartening to know. And with the support from the Atal Incubation uh, 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 Mission and with the, the support of uh, uh, Dr. Ramanan Ji and his team that we would like to uh, what do you say to strengthen this and move forward so with this a uh, few words i would be very happy to welcome all of you and uh, uh, again welcome all the guests and also the visitors and also may all my faculty members and the students viewers so for this important uh, discussion which uh, our friend professor punit sharma ji is uh, taking uh, to all of us and uh, uh, hope that this whole interactions will be very useful, very interesting and uh, very exciting for all of us. So thank you very much. And uh, Nituji, again for you. Thank you, sir. Now for the much awaited webinar, I invite Professor Punit Sharma to start the panel discussion. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nituji. I am just reading it out. New York Times, 1989. Ford started manufacturing cars. That was the time of Ghoda Gadi. So he started thinking something else. Though the mode of commutation was very much available in the form of Ghoda Gadi. Many such examples are there in the form of pen. Fountain pen to a click pen these buttons to zip and then subsequently velcro when we commute especially at the time of airport everybody is carrying a trolley suitcase so a pilot was not happy by carrying the luggage in his daily flight schedules so he started thinking in a different manner and you'll be surprised that trolley suitcase is an innovation by a pilot not by an engineer or by an industrialist. So life is full of such many useful creative innovations. So we have been talking a lot about innovations, startups and entrepreneurships. This is the high time to execute. So that's why today's topic is make a dent, sprouting innovation and startups. Dr. Ramanan, welcome. Welcome to this uh, panel discussion. So the very first question is innovation for human evolution. Your take on that. Uh, thank you, Puneet Ji, and uh, thank you, uh, Manipal uh, University, for giving me an opportunity uh, 
to spend some time with all of you to reflect on a topic that is very dear to my heart and I'm sure which is very important to every one of us who are tuned in to this uh, particular webinar. I also hope that every one of you is safe and healthy and uh, practicing all the safeguards that need to be practiced during these very difficult times, the COVID-19 time. Sir, your mic has gone on mute, sir. Is it okay? Yeah, or, could you please continue? Did you hear anything or it was on mute? It's audible now. Yeah, okay. So did you hear anything that I spoke or should I start again? No, uh, you can start with the answer part now. Innovation for human evolution. Yeah. So, um, you know, that is, uh, there is this, um, whatever you see in terms of uh, human progress has been due to uh, innovation. And whatever you see, um, change has been defined as the only constant in life. Uh, and it is when you embrace change and when you actually explore, uh, exploration leads uh, to a change uh, and change leads to innovation and innovation leads to progress. So. Innovation is key and entrepreneurship is key to the progress of mankind. In anything that you are seeing, any endeavor that you have seen today in the world across, uh, the progress of the world is because of people who looked at things and asked the question, why should it be like this? What can be done to improve it? Uh, what is it that can be changed? Uh, and people who were not willing to accept the status quo. So when you question, uh, when you allow your curiosity and when you are bold enough to question things which others accept without questioning and then you say, you know, if I want to improve the situation, whatever it be, like for example, the, the examples that you gave, you know, I have a pen, uh, can I make a better pen? I have a button, can I make a better button? Uh, I have a car, I have a mode of transport, can I have a better mode of transport? And when you start questioning very basic things that many of us see but don't question, and those people who question uh, and become curious, they are ready to explore and they are ready to allow their creativity and their imagination to flourish. And when they start allowing their creativity and imagination to, to start reimagining a new world uh, where this particular problem can be solved, then you start the process of finding out how to do it. And when you start finding out how to do it, then you start innovating. And that is exactly what, for example, how Atal Innovation Mission, the focus of the mission has been, how do you create that innovative mindset in people all across our country? You know, it is, it is one thing to say we should be very innovative. Uh, it's one thing to say we want entrepreneurs and we want startups and we want world-class companies and so on. But it is another thing to be able to create a culture of innovation in your thinking in your organization, in the people. And what we need is to ensure that the problem solving, innovative thinking, curious thinking and research oriented innovation, applied innovation uh, comes into being into every young student in school, whether it is be in school or whether you go to the university or whether you go to the industry, uh, you are not ready to accept the status quo. And when you're not ready to accept the status quo, and then you start wondering how to improve things. That's what leads to innovation. Please, you are muted. Yeah. Please, you are muted. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramanan. As we all know that there are specific conditions to get the sprouts, right? It is not easy to, uh, you know, uh, start a journey afresh converting uh, okay mr jeet, jeet is there uh, yeah. thank you for joining us and uh, uh, might be some last minute technical glitches are there may I request professor Aaron sharma oh, to uh, welcome so Jeet's great part. to see you uh, mr jeet thank you a warm welcome to this uh, webinar and thank you for giving your time for the for the benefit of audience i would like to introduce mr jeet 
Mr. Jeet is an entrepreneur, author, speaker, and coach. He is a co-founder and CEO of In Time Tech. Jeet is the global soft. It's a global software solution company that has received 5,000 fastest growing companies award. Idaho's best places to work, HP Innovation Award, and CEO of Influence. I mean, those are great credentials, sir. And having found time to be with us, let me also apprise the audience that it is four o'clock at his place. He is in U.S. early morning, four o'clock, and he is so energetic to join us, sir. On behalf of Manipal University Jaipur, we welcome you, sir. and surely the audience along with the uh, the deliberations with the uh, mr ramanan uh, it will be a very very useful and beneficial for all of us thank you so much for joining mr ji over dr to sham dr sham thank you for your warm welcome and it's a privilege to share privilege to share this webinar with dr ramanan uh, dr yu sharma and then preet uh is wonderful to be here and then we'll talk more so as we go along but uh, thank you for your warm warm welcome sure over to puneet thank you professor sharma uh so to begin with we started with the human evaluation and dr ramanan uh, very well quoted about uh, a mind which is full of curiosity a mind which is full of questions and a vigilant and observant mind these are the basic necessities to look forward to start with innovation coming to uh, mr jeet why are social and cultural system why are social and cultural system doesn't embrace innovation naturally why there is some external force required for that yeah so your take mr jeet kumar sure so first of all again it's just like a truly a privilege to share with the such a uh, dignity and uh, uh dr ramran i was reading about you and just like it's privilege privilege to share this desk with you so thank you very much for and um uh, purit i think this is a privilege for me also to um being part of this uh, webinar and being here and so i welcome all the audience all the people who have joined in and uh, definitely it's early morning here um and um and i was trying to figure it out some of the stuff in the last minute because the team was not working uh, so what eventually did work and i'm here um coming back to your question i think if you think about uh, what dr ramran was talking about um innovation required uh, many many thing um and if you think from the point of view of a small child or a growing up toddler or a, a teenager or a adult or a person like who's reached to certain place the two kind of innovation it's a product innovation or a process innovation most of the time people think that innovation can be only a product innovation how many time you can have a person like steve jobs or any other person who can really come up with something which is unique uh, completely not even present but there are so many opportunity to innovate um where you can improve things existing things can be improved but in order to improve those things you need a mind which allows you to create those kind of a conversation and our culture and social system is not designed for it because those kind of improvement required patience those kind of improvement required uh, appetite to fail those kind of uh, improvements required stamina um you know mental stamina physical stamina social stamina financial stamina um those kind of improvement required where you have a discipline and hard work and thinking towards that so why social and cultural are are not conducive to provide because we are living in the world of hurry um people was just want to do quick thing but while it requires a lot of lot of curiosity lot of experiment um and so i was reading about that one that why why in india particularly uh, if you think about we have such a big large population and such a brilliant mind um why can't we create a one operating system right now uh why can we have a something which is like a simple web browser um why can we have a team or a or a people who can really come up with something called like zoom channel we are talking like a right now team not that it's a problem or anything challenge because people wants to be in a hurry people wants to fix thing people wants to do things in a way which is you no know, bringing together and then figuring it out how do we how do we make that thing work rather than having a 
patience, peaceful, uh, long-term view, where parent supports, professor supports, industrial supports, um, social uh, social supports is there where people say, oh, you have been doing this one for three years, what happened? No, it takes time to innovate. Um, so I would like to invite everyone, uh, when you ask what are the what are the challenges, why does it naturally support? Because it requires time and people don't want to give time. It requires failure, but people don't like being failed. Um, all of that is a limitation and challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jeet. I mean, these are the things which cannot be. They're able to hear you, Puneet. They're able to hear you. Yeah. You wish to add up something? No, I was, uh, I was saying we were. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, we, were, we are able to hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, these uh, very well said by Mr. Jeet Kumar. These are the things which cannot be taught through books. This can be acquired through the journey of life, patience, the very first and foremost thing would like to share you that uh, Mr. Jeet is not, I mean, he's from very much uh, a small town, uh, Bharatpur, uh, there is a uh, Tasil Nagar. He's from that small town and he studied in MNIT, in MNIT and uh, would like to know more about your personal journey. And so as of now, uh, a very important attribute you have mentioned that we are mostly in hurry to attain, to, to achieve something. We are not interested in the journey, we are not interested in the process because this transformation, this sprouting is a process, right? Uh, uh, in layman's language, when we chane ko raat ko bhigote hain portly mein aur phir kahi baare ghante ke baad mein wo sprout nahi dalte hain. And we are in a hurry to, you know, boil it in pressure cooker and uh, just to you know, absorb it. So it's a different yeah. journey. So very essential part is uh, I, the I, patience. I, I want to share, like if you think Please, about- most uh, जब हम छोटे बच्चे थे गांव में पैदा हुए एंड एंड जब हम ग्रो कर रहे थे छोटे से कस्बा नगर करके आई ऑलवेज यूज टू वंडर आई वाज वेरी क्यूरियस माइंड माइंडेड पर्सन दैट ओके वी आई क्रिकेट खेलते थे ऐसे बॉल ऐसे ट्रंड कैसे की लाइक हाउ डू वी रियली नीड टू स्टार्ट प्लेइंग द गेम एंड स्टार्ट गेटिंग अ हेड हाउ डू वी थिंक अ हेड ऑफ द गेम बट पीपल are not able to create that kind of a mindset because people want job, people want salaries, people want, and those are rightly, but then in order to innovate, like Dr. Ramanan, I was seeing like how much effort you have put into the colleges and schools and in the mind, greater minds who are, who are willing. So there are two categories of people I want to talk about. One, those who want to innovate, but there is not a system which Dr. Ramanathan is really solving that problem. And there are a the group of people who don't even want to innovate, for example, because they, want, they are in a hurry, because the cultural and family system which we talked about. I think the both category of people required support and they both required a push. Right? Then the sprouting of the innovation and startup community will come up. So, thank you, Mr. Jeet. Now, uh, moving to Dr. Ramanan, where and how does innovation flourish? So, uh, thanks, uh, Puneet. And I think uh, Dr. Jeet uh, mentioned very rightly and appropriately the, the very two important things related to innovation, right? One, he said, you have to have an innovative mindset. Uh, acquiring an innovative mindset is one thing because even and the second part is the ecosystem. You have to have an ecosystem which is enabling, encouraging uh, innovation and which is, you know, allowing if, a, if there is an innovative mind and there is a mind willing to innovate, then are you having an ecosystem which is allowing that innovation to blossom and to express its full potential? You know, and that is why, as he also said, India is full of brilliant people. But when you don't have an ecosystem of innovation available, then they, when they go to the United States and then you become, you know, extraordinarily successful. You have a Satya Nadala heading Microsoft, a Sundar Pichai heading Google, uh, you have a Shandhu Narayan heading Adobe, you have many uh, Professor Jeet who has written books and who is uh, run his, running his own company. So we, they become very successful. Why? Because not because they could not do it in India. They, If you provided that ecosystem for their innovation to flourish, then you would have been able to uh, create a thousand Nadalas here, a thousand uh, 
um, you know, uh, Sundar Pichai is here. So the two important things is how do we create this innovative mindset? And you have to start young. You know, we go and say we want to have 30,000 startups. We are a startup nation, right? And we want to have 30,000 startups. But 30,000 startups should know what it means to innovate and to create world-class products or, or world-class services. And like he rightly mentioned, innovation is not about just creating a product. Innovation can be in a service. Innovation, innovation is anything about improving from where you are. Whatever you are seeing, whatever you are experiencing, how am I going to change that experience? And in order to change the experience, you leverage technology, you leverage the tools, uh, you leverage knowledge, you leverage the ecosystem, you leverage, leverage partners and so on. And you bring all of them together in order to be able to create that change. And you know, there are two words which are very important in your webinar today. One is the word making a dent. Uh, I would slightly transform it and say making an impact. You know, how do you make an impact? Sometimes a dent is associated with damage, but the impact is how do you make a very positive impact? And Steve Jobs very famously captured it, right? He said, we should all leave a ding in the universe. Now that's a very important point. Every one of us who are born are born innovators. And I, I have said this earlier that, uh, you know, how does a child learn to walk? It gets up, it falls down, it gets up, it falls down again. But every time it stands up, it innovates. Every second, every time it, uh, uh, every time the child stands up, uh, there is something different. He realizes that this is what I should do. How does the child start speaking? You know, it just observes the pattern of movement of lips uh, and hears some sounds. It puts, it connects them together and then it starts speaking. And then soon you are not able to, you know, make it stop talking. So that innovation is there inherent in every individual. But what happens is our schooling system, which are unfortunately, you can call it historically evolved, or you can you can blame it on uh, the British uh, who have who have uh, you know bequeathed a, a form of learning to all of us. Whatever it be, the point is that a rote learning mindset will not lead to innovation. A rote learning mindset leads to knowledge acquisition and the application of that knowledge, but it doesn't lead to innovative thinking unless you make it as a part of the DNA of the school, the university, the you know, the industry, and so on. So that is why we are launched thousands of adult tinkering labs in India, so that young students from grade six to grade twelve start tinkering with technology. And why today it is possible because technology has become available, affordable, and accessible, and it has become advanced. So you have 3D printers, robotics, IoT, uh, miniaturized electronics, augmented virtual reality. All of this do-it-yourself kits are available for a meager amount of 12 lakhs in a school, and we give 20 lakhs to the school so that you can set up an adult tinkering lab and allow the students to come and express their ideas. Uh, they, second thing is we are involving them in problem solving. So you tell them, look at the problems in and around your community and try to see how you can solve the problem. So you are coming from your school to your uh, office, home or you're going from your home to a hospital or you're going to the park. Look at what is the problem around. Uh, do you see a traffic problem? Do you see a waste management problem? Do you see a hygiene problem? Do you see a transportation problem? Uh, do you see a housing problem? So people start noticing, you know, young students are looking at it and say, hey, this is the problem I want to solve. I see the, the blind person crossing the road and he's finding it difficult. How can I use sensor technology and IoT technology to create a helmet? And that helmet allows and, and dictates or through IVR, it will tell the uh, blind person that don't cross the road right now. There is a car coming or there is a, the signal is not green and so on and so forth. So this whole concept of learning to Pro identify problems and then look upon it as an opportunity to solve and look upon it as an entrepreneurial potential. You know, that will lead to innovative thinking. And so we have now two and a half million students from these 5,000 schools who are almost on a daily basis going and engaging themselves with such activities. And it is so delightful for them because there is no pressure of work, uh, of, of getting marks. We don't judge them. There is no credit being associated with innovation. It is the joy of innovation, the joy of creating something on your own. And you know, that joy and that confidence uh, that it fills every student up, you know, when they go and they show to their parents, look, this is what I created. So the parents suddenly realize that my daughter and my son is having this extraordinary ability to create something, right? And then, the, so the society, the teacher, the principal, the school, the parent, everybody now starts appreciating 
uh, an aspect of the child which was not evident because you were only judging by marks right and now you are no longer judging by marks and in fact it has been shown amply here that uh, all the students who are not necessarily great academic performers are actually very good in innovation and the great academic performers are not necessarily the best in innovation so you have this sudden realization that everybody has something and how do you combine these people together you need the academic expert you need a technical expert you need the communication expert you need the marketing expert and this a team a small team gets formed and they start innovating and this leads them on when they go to the university then they say oh i have now i need an ecosystem and that ecosystem we are providing through these incubators athel incubators and so on so that these incubators will foster startups you see students when they graduate from a university like manipal right fantastic university great students but what do they you have only a chief placement officer you don't have a chief innovation officer in the in the uh, organization i feel you should not have a chief place i mean you should have a chief placement officer but you should have a chief research and innovation officer who is outreaching who is creating outreach events so that companies and industries come to the university and see that recognize the innovative talent which is there in the university and they create innovation projects which are required in the industry and therefore instead of just people wanting to get hired and become job seekers they have an opportunity to become job creators and that job creation happens through the incubator so for two years when the mind is fresh it is not cluttered you know your imagination can go wild that is the most creative part of a young student's life and if at that point in time you enable and pre- create that ecosystem for entrepreneurship for startups for two years support them so we give 10 crores of grant to the university so that they can create an incubator now according to me we have we have 10500 engineering and related institution in india 39000 colleges and we have 150 million young students entering into the workplace if you do not give them at this point in time where you have a fast growing economy where you have a demographic dividend and where we have this fantastic uh, talent which is available if you don't give them the opportunity to become innovators at a time when technology is allowing you to rechange the entire world you know then we would lose a great opportunity to create a nation of job creators and therefore innovation is so very important and supporting it with an ecosystem of entrepreneurship startups community innovation centers and so on are are very key to driving this whole aspect along thank you dr ramanan thank you uh, from all your statements uh, this is what is uh, you know uh, a learning that catch them young is the right way to start with i mean entrepreneurship or innovation is not something like which is required to be practiced after completion of your degrees yeah. so john uh, professor uh, so, uh, professor preet i want to say something so today dr please. ramanan is going to talk about like uh, when i'm listening to him such a joy you know it's wonderful to see the energy and a passion of a man who is so committed to transform the country of a 1.3 billion people right now so for me it's just a privilege honestly i cannot be emphasize enough to really share that um it's a privilege and a blessing to be here so today dr ramran is going to talk about the problem statement and what he's doing i'm going to talk about how the instantiation like how the instantiation is happening in the industry because we have a 500 people team we have about 430 people working in india between jaipur and bangalore and what he's talking i see every day day by day when people come from colleges to our company they are being trained and educated to follow a streamline of like a mechanical process they just say i punch my card i come to my office i write what you are asking me to do and i go back home and then that's all what my role is and i get my paycheck and i'm done for the day now that will not lead to innovation what will lead to the innovation what dr ramnan is talking about where from parents to school to colleges where we value creating things as much as earning money um we create a ecosystem where parents believe the role of their kids is to create something not no bolte naukri mil jaye apna ghar chala le theek hai bhai right that will not lead to innovation i promise because that will means 
I will take care of my, I will buy my car, I will my, buy my house, and I will have a comfortable life. Now, nothing wrong about that. Because, but innovation requires a different level of thinking, a different stamina, where that grit, that grit and that thinking where I will do something, I will create something, I will make something. Um, and for that, you need a that kind of a mindset and that kind of an ecosystem where people let those kind of people allow to create. Um, and then they need peace because agar wo kaam kar rahe aur ghar mein thoda lai chal rahi hai to kaise kaam karenge yaar right like the the peace and love and 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 uh, affection they need money um if you think about they need to identify the idea they need to validate the idea they need to create a prototype of the idea they need to go back and test that idea they need to get the feedback of the idea and then need to reimplement retest launch and grow and and if you ask an innovator to do all of that, it's just like I I want to create, I want peace. You give me my lab, you give me my own space, and I will create. I need other people who can come along with me, and that is also not happening. We are putting these creative minds to do something which they are not designed for. Um. So entrepreneur like me, what we do, if you think about our in time tech as a company, we have created a R and D lab. We call it in time tech lab, where people who are innovative mind, um, we are giving them a safe and secure environment where they can come along. Morning to evening, we let them fail, we let them grow, we let them create, and then we say, okay, don't worry about it. Your salary is being taken care, your piece is being taken care. You continue to. And out of 10 things, if one thing might work, that's good enough for us. Um, so all that all that is required. Um, so when when Dr. Ramnan, you were talking about, it's just like uh, my blood was flowing inside my body. I say, we need those kind of a push from, from the government of India. And we need a kind of entrepreneurs who provide the safe and secure and peaceful environment for people to innovate. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Jeet. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jeet. Uh, I mean, uh, both of uh, both of the uh, panelists are they are ageless body. I mean, they're full of energy. I mean, daily, uh, you know, apart from their routine work, they're interacting so many people. They are coming with so many nice ideas and as well as implement implementing them. And especially Dr. Amanan, the transformation that you've given to India in last three, four years, it is phenomenal. It is a reference. I'm telling you, mark my word in coming times, mm -hmm. these, uh, your, your uh, experimentations will become a case study, ideation to uh, execution. I, I'm sure uh, I, I might contribute some of the chapters in that particular area. So uh, from the learnings uh, that I could take from your uh, earlier uh, responses. So this is a journey of uh, self uh, realization. And joy of self-realization realization is more important than joy of the great cards. So I, I, I think parents should realize this more that it is more important that your child is happy by doing each and every activity in routine life rather than uh, you know at the final day of uh, you know getting the great card, uh, your the whole family is happy. Mithai bati ja rahi hai, you know prayers ho rahi hai that he has done something good. So this is not at all about you know being happy uh, on a particular day. It is about happiness each day. Each day, if your ward is doing something good, something creative, observing even if observing uh, you in between, you mentioned about social entrepreneurship. I'll come back to that in the uh, later part of the discussion. I mean, many of the students they might be having an attribute of self-start. Mm -hmm. Some of them might be kickstart, and some of them might be push or dhaka start yeah. but ultimately they will start this is for sure but we need to be patient enough uh, i mean to help them in uh, their realization of their own journey their own methods what they are good at and uh, whole ecosystem should be there so that uh, they can identify what is good for them so now coming to mr g to you back so uh, the first institution is home mention one thing which is very important which you said you know, uh, students are at various levels, okay? And some of them are very shy and diffident, though they're very capable. How do you detect that 
capability inside them. That is very important, you know. And very often, we only detect the capability through an examination or through the marks that you get, but you do not have other mechanisms or not you exert any other mechanisms of detecting that potential. And that's why what we did uh, for the Atal Tinkering Labs is we said we want mentors and we uh, put up a portal and asked we want mentors of change. Uh, and we asked for people who are professional, who are, uh, you know, been there, done that, uh, uh, they have accomplished something in life, um, B-Techs, M-Techs, they are in uh, professional organizations, corporates and so on. And we were so surprised. We had 10,000 mentors who registered immediately saying we will we volunteer to spend four to six hours every week. We said minimum four to six hours we want commitment uh, and you could select whatever time it could be on a weekend, it could be on a uh, after the office hours or whatever and it could also be done remotely. You know, you don't need to be physically present. And um, we had more than 10,000 mentors who registered and today we have uh, 5,000 of them allocated to all the tinkering labs. We have another 2,000 of them uh, with startups and incubators. And why I talk about this mentorship is, you know, we all want to give back. We have all benefited today from the educational systems, even though they were rote learning, we have all benefited today. But we have a lot to give back to society. And whenever I uh, talk to professionals, you know, they, uh, when we say CSR causes, um, you not many things appeal. If you say we are going on a blood bank drive, we are going on a clean drive and all that, that all is some people get attracted towards that, some people don't. But anyone who has become a professional wants to give back his learning and his the gain, experience that they have gained. So this is how at least I found that this response to mentorship across the country, we, are called, we call them mentors of change, has helped us. Now this mentorship has enabled our um, schools and the teacher also. For we, we, the mentor comes not with a teacher's attitude, but as a friend, philosopher and a guide, right? So the students open up and they are able to discuss their ideas. They're also able to share some of their problems. Some of them may have problems at home because of which, you know, they are not able to do a lot of things in the school. So this sort of thing from the mentorship has come uh, become very useful. And we have been able to, and it's, it's the teachers who give us the feedback, Teachers are saying that because of your mentorship program, we are now able to see the, the potential in every child. And that is a fantastic thing. And I think that is very important so that uh, the point that you made, uh, how do you draw the, the, the shy people? How do you draw the diffident person? How do you, uh, how do you tell them to overcome the word fail? Uh, you know, they should not look upon themselves as failures. And as Dr. Abdul Kalam said, the word fail means first attempt in learning. So we want every child to think you are you are a success or you have a first attempt in learning. And Thomas Alva Edison so famously said that I did not fail uh, 10,000 times. I only found 10,000 new ways of not making a light bulb. So that's the sort of attitude that we need in our people in India, especially because you, you see the average Indian when he goes abroad. I mean, I've been part of TCS, so I know uh, we hardly question anything that the customer says. If the customer says, I want you to do like this, immediately we start doing it. And then maybe you know that there is a better way to do it, but we never question it. And when, and why we don't? Because we are afraid that, you know, either we are afraid of failure uh, or being considered a failure. Not, you are afraid to even voice a question because what will the teacher say? What will that guy say? What a dumb question you're asking. You know, so this fear has to be completely taken off from our students' minds. And when they, when you take out that fear, and today if you go and see in these universities and uh, tinkering labs and all that, students just boldly ask anything. And and you are at the receiving end. You'll go back and say, oh, I don't know this answer. I'm going to go back and do some more research and I'll, I'll get back with the answer. So I think this is very important. The word failure should be removed. And one more point I just want to say because I don't want to forget about it. You said the word, uh, you are very aptly titled sprouting uh, innovation, right? Sprouting is, is possible when you sow the seeds of innovation first, the seeds of innovative thinking. So you have to sow that seed and then you have to water it and you have to nurture it and you have to protect it and then it will sprout uh, and, and it will you know blossom into a, a beautiful flower or a tree or whatever fruit that, that you're looking for. Thank you, Dr. Ramanan. Now coming to Mr. Jeet Kumar, your take on role of parents, society and academic institutions for sprouting innovation. Yeah, I think what we are building upon here is again keep 
going, a innovative mind and an ecosystem, right? So we're going to go back and forth in these two kind of conversation because if there is no innovative mind, ecosystem will not work. Without ecosystem, these guys will not like sprout what we are using. They are not going to blossom. They will not share us. I say these are, I was thinking about what is, what we need from institutes or teachers or companies or entrepreneurs to support. Here's a few things which I can say. Um, we should have a tolerance for risk taking um, from the ecosystem. While from the individual level, we should have no tolerance for incompetency. Uh, so what does it mean? Like we want to make sure that we let people take risk because either you succeed or you learn, you never fail, right? So you might fall short and okay, get up, dust off, get back on the bike and try again. That's how it works. That when you learn riding a bike, like a bicycle, when we cycle, we learn the first time we learn, you fall down, you just go, oh my God, I'm just fall down. What do I do now? No, you get up, you dust off, you get back, you run and ride again. And, and then you fall again and then you do. So falling short. So a ecosystem which allow risk taking, but then from the person who is doing it, there should not be no, no tolerance for incompetency. Otherwise saying willing to experiment, right? But human beings should be highly disciplined um, because if you just doing it for fun, but no cause, you will not improve. Um, I see some of the people like a players in a, any basketball game, if you take, you are just going and playing for an hour, but if you are not having an intentional way of experimenting things in that time, like you know the ball is not going from here, my jump is not good, my hand position is not good, you need to video record yourself even and then go back and watch your tapes. Okay, this is how I can improve things. So. I would say willing to experiment, but you need to have a high disciplined approach. Another thing, you need to be psychologically safe and sound. Like ecosystem provide a psychological safe and secure uh, environment to people where people just don't need to worry too much about the clutter. Uh, office like you need to give them a safe and secure environment. And then, but then you need to brutally candid with them that say, okay, a person should be brutally candid that am I am I just having fun here or am I doing something right another one is you need to have a team around um, ecosystem should provide team just like what Dr. Ramran was saying after innovation you need to team up build a prototype convert prototype into product ties you need to have a marketing team you need to have a communication team you need to have a selling team all of that but in in that whole team everyone should be held accountable um, Every, you should not have a bunch of people are coming together and then doing nothing. No, you need to have a accountability. I call it in order to be uh, interdependent, you need to be independent first. Um, there's a book which Stephen Covey has written called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It talks about being dependent is not a good idea, you, but they're not independent is not a good idea. You need to be interdependent as a team. But then in order to be interdependent, you should not be burdened. A wicket keeper should be independently capable before he can be a, a critical part of the team. And the lastly, I think the role of a leader, organizations, families, teaching, schools, where everyone should be flat, where anyone can talk with anyone. Dr. Ramnan was saying anyone can question anyone, right? But the role of a leader is to make sure that the whole ecosystem has been constructed and nurture and grow and scale, all that stuff is doing, and that's probably what I was sharing earlier, looking at Atal uh, um, mission, initiative of this innovative mission, you know, Atal innovation mission, which is going on, is such a key element because Dr. Ramnan's leadership is making things happen now. It is critical for a leader to provide that kind of thing. And then one last thing which I would also say, innovation requires patience and perseverance and peace, right? Patience, perseverance, and peace. So there is a long term effort is required. In that long term effort, you need to have a short term deliverables. It's gonna, is it okay, give me three years and I'll come back. It doesn't work, right? You need to have a three years roadmap, but you need to have a, in, in six months what I'm going to deliver. Because if you are not delivering and testing and scaling to that level, then no one is going to support you, right? So long term view with a short term deliverables. So those are the kind of things which I can say from an innovative mind and also to the ecosystem. 
Thank you, Mr. Jeet. Patience, perseverance, and peace. These are the basic key elements which are required to establish an ecosystem, be it home, be it academic institution, or be it in society. Is it audible? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Now, uh, this is there is a quick question from uh, Deepa Mishra. Uh, this is, uh, what are the reasons do you think hinder the creation of uh, innovation ecosystem in the education institutions in India? So, Dr. Raman, could you please help me? Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, actually, uh, in terms of and the focus on innovation and entrepreneurship has been somewhat missing in most of our universities. And I think that is being corrected now. At the school level, we are launching this tinkering labs and many universities are now uh, setting up incubators. We have now close to 250 incubators in our country. So, which is a good thing. But from my point of view, every university should have uh, any world-class university and you, want, you should aspire to become a world-class university. It should have an incubator, a world-class incubator because the students graduating from that school uh, should be able to, uh, you know, identify themselves and have the ability to create startups and entrepreneurial ventures, be supported for a period of time when they, be, they are able to stand on their own legs uh, and they are able to attract the uh, investment capital uh, or the venture capital firms to invest in them. Um, you know, the in India, uh, one of the big things, uh, and the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned this very, I thought, very eloquently in his speech before he released the 20 lakh uh, um, uh, restructuring package. Uh, he said there are five pillars on which uh, Atman Nirbhar uh, India Bharat stands, right? Self-reliant India. Uh, and and, and uh, those five pillars are very important and this should be taught in every university, according to me, and they are setting up the innovation cells because innovation and entrepreneurship is going to drive these five pillars. Now, what are the five pillars he talked about? First, he said is the demographic dividend. He said we have, uh, you know, a demographic dividend that is the envy of many a country. 65% of our people are under 35 years old. Uh, and I, like I said, 150 million students are entering into the workplace over the next five to 10 years. So, unless you are able to capitalize on this demographic dividend for the benefit of this country, we would have a great opportunity loss. Now, how do you do that? You have to make our young students uh, in the schools, universities and all that become very innovative and you have to provide their entrepreneurial ecosystem for them to be able to thrive and become a nation of job creators. Now, why do we need that? Because you see, we have eight, my, we have eight tier one cities in our country. We have 733 districts. We have 600,000 villages and we have 115 of our districts as aspirational districts in India. We have 22.5% of our country below the poverty line. We have 44% of our country agri-economy based. Only 13% of our entrepreneurs are women entrepreneurs. Now, these are serious gaps which need to be addressed in order to leverage this demographic dividend. And therefore, the second pillar that he has mentioned is becomes very important. And that is the pillar of infrastructure. How do you ensure that we have the right physical infrastructure as well as the digital infrastructure? Because today, digital infrastructure is going to be a very important role in the growth of the nation as much as physical infrastructure. And how do you ensure that instead of eight tier one cities, I have 200 smart cities and each smart city becomes a hub of job innovation and creation, right? So this is very important because you don't want migrant workers all migrating to eight tier one cities and then struggling with all the COVID-19 problems that we are talking about. And this is only getting worse in the future. You know, problems of water management, waste management, electricity management, affordable housing, all of these are going to multiply if everybody is flocking to one place. So we have to create 200, 300 centers of job uh, creation and innovation. And that is possible only through innovation in infrastructure, smart infrastructure, digital highways, um, you know, technologically driven transportation systems, mass transportation systems and so on. The third pillar he has talked of is demand. You know, we are very fortunate, 1.3 billion people, we have a demand for everything. So you don't need to look anywhere else for the demand, right? Of course, it becomes an icing on the cake if you're able to export you know, whatever products and services you're creating to the rest of the world. So that's the icing on the cake. 
but you have a demand in india you have the problems of affordable housing and clean drinking water renewable energies defense you name it that is a requirement so how do you address that demand you also have therefore we have in in athal innovation mission one of the things we are doing is we are setting up community innovation centers across the country why because these will be set only in tier 2 tier 3 rural hilly coastal districts the remote towns you know tirupur in uh, near coimbatore where the textile uh, hub is there we need to create innovation centers there so that local communities uh, you know benefit and when local communities benefit from the innovation or start creating innovation according to the needs of the local community you do create job creation uh, opportunities take for example goa yeah goa has a ship building industry which can be grown it can have a tourism industry which can grow it can have a fishing industry which can grow it can have a casual nut industry which can grow uh, are we doing enough in terms of creating the innovative ecosystem to allow all of this to grow that is what we have to do so that's why this community innovation centers will be important the fourth pillar he has talked about is that of technology and we all have been talking about it how technology should transform the country in and how you innovations in technology uh, or leveraging innovations due to technology can help you don't need to have a technology solution but you should use technology for your service or your solution to reach the remotest place of the world because that's possible right e-commerce is possible amazon is across uh, accessible across the world and uh, any product or any service uh, uh, that you want to render you can have a innovative service being offered to any part of the world and finally he talked about the pillar of economy because you want to be a self reliant india then you have to ensure that the remotest parts of the country social innovation is as important as commercial innovation if you have a digital divide and if you don't have this uh, and and if you still uh, the digital divide is going to only increase the difference between the haves and the have nots you cannot neglect those people who are at the other end of the spectrum and who are also digitally not connected and and you have to ensure that all the social problems of our country are solved and when you solve the social problem when there is social innovation commercial innovation automatically will happen economic growth will automatically happen the khan academy is a great example you know that we have gone through where a, a simple solution by uh, the khan academy for solving uh, math problems across the net uh, for his nephew or niece and see where it has landed him in everywhere people are willing to pour money into the khan academy from all across the world in order to make that so a social innovation can have commercial backing and commercial impact so these are all these things should go towards what we should aspire in in india and and for the rest of the world not just in india and and that's where we uh, the, the the part of you know creating that innovative the awareness the education uh, uh, enabling the empathy of the people to see what are the problems that needs to be solved empowering them with tools and the ecosystem and and energizing them with entrepreneurial uh, incentives this is what we need uh, in the country to be able to uh, deliver thank you dr ramanan i think uh, uh, very well said by you this we need to connect the social entrepreneurship or social inno innovation uh, with the internships especially uh, during the college time whenever students go out for uh, any kind of internship projects i think these two things can be gelled up and uh, i'm i'm sure uh, this will get some results in terms of developing uh, uh, innovation culture in the college campuses another one quick question uh, from mr ravi kochak he is retired additional member railway board presently he is associated with imac e he is chief mentor this question is again relevant to uh, uh, academics itself sir my experience with engineering college students of present generation is that they are smart and curious and have innovative ideas but they do not know how to practically take the idea forward maybe some courses on this subject be made mandatory your views dr ramnan i agree i will ask dr g to to comment on it because he is the receiver of all the products from the university so i would ask him to comment on it yeah. but I, i after that i will share a few thoughts okay. But Dr. Ramnath, yeah. thank you. By the way, Doctor, I have not reached to a doctor degree, so I, but I appreciate your acknowledging me for that. So I'm just like you can call me Jeet, and I'm okay. so younger to you. For so thank you very much for that. So, so sorry, sorry, Mr. Yeah. Jeet, I would like to intervene here. 
uh, it is not necessary that the doctor is awarded just merely by acquiring a degree. It is by the practice itself. You have already, you profess some knowledge. You have practiced something. So you are already a doctorate. No, no, I have written a book for that uh, bit, uh, but what I can talk about is the implementation. So what Dr. Please. Ramnan is asking, really to me to comment on this one is, because truly um, what I see a gap, a gap between uh, educational institutes and entrepreneurial um, ecosystem. And here is the gap. The gap is that people, motivation and inspiration are not going to create thing. It is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition. You need to have that motivation and inspiration and that hunger and that innovative mind. Um, so what is missing is mostly is if, if someone asks me, hey, what kind of a subject, what kind of things you can form? I would teach people and I've literally captured some of them in this book. It's called, what is it required to convert an idea into a reality? And what is required in the idea into reality is this one. One should be clear. Why are you doing, what are you doing and how you are doing? People are not clear about the why part. Um, so if, for example, if someone is hungry and having an innovative mind, um, it was it was um, Ravi the, who asked the question, uh, right, Puri? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Mr. Ravi, if I, if I share this, why these people who are hungry and having an innovative mind are not able to convert? Because they don't know why they're hungry, what they are planning to create and for whom. So first and foremost, we need to teach them is, okay, for example, I became an entrepreneur because I wanted to create jobs. And so I was clear about that. So when things became harder, it did not reduce my, my stamina, my motivation, my inspiration. In fact, it really feed that much more energy in me to really take it forward. So that's number one. Why are you doing what you are doing? Second, we need to teach people that there are some soft skills required. Um, you need to be disciplined, I talk about. You need to be committed. You need to, you need to really have a good team playing. You need to have a leadership skills. You need to have a listening skills. Um, because there are a lot of these skills are required in the real world. Um, if someone says, hey, I have an idea, but customer says, I need something else, the people who are using, but you are so stubborn and adamant that no, that's the only which I'm going to do. It will not work. Um, you need to listen to your customer. You need to listen to your stakeholders. And um, so listening, um, discipline, hard work, people are hard work and sincerity is okay, but you need to learn those part of it. Along with that, they also need to learn, okay, when to say enough is enough and I need to quit. Not quitting is a quitting on the life, but this idea may not be survive, right? So knowing when to, when to stop. Um, people go too far, too much, too long. And then they waste time and energy and resources in that, which idea is not going to work, right? So that's another element after why you are doing to how you are doing. And then lastly, you need to really understand. You need to understand that you have to scale the idea. Once you have reached a certain place, you need to take it to the take it to the masses. Now you need to also learn how how do I hand over my baby to someone else to let the baby becomes a real mainstream mainstream thing because then I need to go back and I need to generate. Am I a CTO or am I a CEO? Right? There's a difference between a chief technology officer and a chief executive officer. Because if you don't understand the difference, if you are CTO to do the CEO work, and Dr. Ramnan, you have, you, you have worked at TCS, you understand the distinction because the job of a CEO is to bring in so many modules and so many areas together. The role of a CTO is to take care of the technology. So you need to know what you are good at it. And you also know what you are not good at it. And then making sure do you build a diversified team. And what you are good at it, you scale in it. What you are not good at it, you need to really include people and you scale from there. So those are the things which I can really put in that book if, if, a, if a subject is created. Um, a, which you need to give exams and everything, those skills has to be developed. And um, then you can convert your idea into the mainstream product. So just to add to what uh, G, G said, you know, I just want to um, emphasize again how important it is to indoctrinate innovative thinking and entrepreneurial thinking in schools and universities. It is very important. 
and it should become part of the curriculum already uh, it is it is happening in a uh, in an indirect way in the schools because of the tinkering labs and so on uh, but it is also uh, universities have been seized with this problem and I've, we have been working with mhrd on this and they have established 1000 innovation cells in 1000 university 1000 of the 10000 aict universities have what is known as an innovation cell and the function of the innovation cell in the university is to mandate um, you know innovation related training curriculum activities projects and so on so in the fourth and fifth year for example what we are saying is instead of just doing uh, there, are, there are some students who are interested in basic research and that is still important but there are many who are uh, you know just writing some papers and doing some projects which is having uh, which is just a uh, enablement for getting a degree rather than enablement for getting a degree why don't you convert that into an innovation project uh, go to the nearest community identify a project take one of the research ideas that is being developed in the university and see how you can apply that research idea to a practical innovation it may be related to renewable energy it can be related to waste management it can be related to housing it could be related to retail whatever you know that every possibility exists if i just go to uh, your neighboring four or five communities and convert them into innovation project and that is one thing that is happening so you learn the you learn the skills of um, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thinking and so on and then having an incubator or attaching them to incubators around uh, that will foster uh, a startup uh, mentality and you know uh, I, I personally think that people should uh, all the young students if they are watching this dabble in entrepreneurship it is no longer risky it is not as risky as it used to be 10 years ago so and if after two years you say hey, this is not my cup of tea, I would like to go to a professional world. You will go into the professional world even a better person than you will ever be if you just directly plunge into the professional world. Because that two year is like, uh, you know, uh, tested by fire. Uh, you have to do so many things, uh, you will learn so many things, you learn to be innovative, you learn to be a problem solver, you learn to shoulder the wheel along with other people, you learn communication skills, many things you learn which is going to be extraordinarily beneficial to you even in a professional career life. So all of this you will carry there. So it will be a success for you no matter what, whether you uh, continue in your entrepreneurship mode or whether you want to move into the professional world, it will be a great learning experience. You're muted, Puri. Thank you, Mr. Ramana. I have received thanks from uh, Mr. Ravi. Uh, Mr. G, thank you for the clarity in this explanation. Uh, I mean, it's one wonderful listening to both of you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ravi, for raising your query. And uh, I'm sure for all coming sessions also, we'll be able to uh, have queries from you. So uh, to continue with, the, as Dr. Ramanan said, if you try the journey of uh, entrepreneurship or a startup, no matter if you succeed or do not succeed, get success. But learnings will be abandoned. So coming to now Mr. G, entrepreneurial journey is usually people say that this is uh, just like traveling through a dark tunnel, which you are not sure the ray of light will be available or not available. I'm sure you might have traveled a lot, you know, a dark, through this dark tunnel and then subsequently finding dividends, fruits of uh, you know, uh, this journey and then scaling uh, all your dreams. So I uh, would like to know about your personal experiences of journey of an entrepreneur. Yeah. So what do you say? Puneet, when we were small, we were very small. We were very small. We were very small. When I was two years old, I lost my father. And um, I'm a single mom raised, uh, four sisters, and seen the poverty. A dirt poverty in a small village in Bharatpur district called Nagar. So Dr. Ramran, when he was talking about the school and kids, and I could see those dirt. I can see those small school. But while I was growing up, I always thought that life could be better for me and life could be better for others. And that idea was drove me nuts. I saw a lot of kids like me who were struggling and they needed a platform. And so I always wanted to be someone who, who saw a lot of scarcity a lot of scarcity, scarcity of resources, scarcity of money, scarcity of education. I did not go to school, proper school. I'm the, 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 the
you know, there's like a, a naj bharte hai usme to you need to sit in the tree and if it is rains there is no school uh, so come back um, kind of a scenario where i grew up um to like bahut sari scarcity um but then i always thought let's convert them into the abundance right why to talk about scarcity um why not you create you increase the size of the pie and every got a bigger piece of the pie um so when i finished my engineering from mit i came to the us and i was doing fine and i worked for hp but then that entrepreneurial zeal and that bug was always there in my mind and it drove me nuts i say no i need to create i can live my life like this and i can go to shopping malls and i can live in a wonderful uh, decent life but what about the dream of the millions who might be like me the kid like me there are many many kids hundreds if not thousand if not millions of kids are waiting and who is creating job seeker to job provider that's what dr ramnan was talking about and so i went i came to india uh, for in 2006 and i worked for a few more years for hp and then 2009 we started this company from scratch in jaipur mein it's a small chitrakoot you know vishali nagar their basement office 700 square feet building we took and started i left hp and then started this one with few other co-founders uh, one of my college buddy his name is sandeep uh, he and i both were in india and then rakesh he was uh, with me at hp and then dan and matt they were with me at on the us side so we came together and just kick off so from scratch we started with no revenue no customer no employees then we built it from scratch abhi that company has grown up from 2009 that to 500 plus people we are at 100 crore rupees company right now on a top line we are doing like we have an office in jaipur oh, thank you very much um and we have a jaipur we are building a building now so we have 100 crore rupees company and we are growing 20 30% and we are investing back into the product ideas we go to colleges we talk about we do hackathon we do tech foods um because the new generation need leaders and so my job and my goal is to really be that source of that leadership source of that listening source of that providing that ecosystem which dr ramnan is talking about so school college and entrepreneurs i think that's the summary now if we do that in all three the last piece is the risk taking and i i talk about the tolerance the appetite for risk and what is risk either you, what we talk about either you succeed or you will learn you will never fail so if you learn you will be that much more equipped to successful later um so that's my quick journey and i have i've written a one book i capture some of these ideas i'm writing another one uh, is going to come out in september october i want this this whole thing to go to the masses uh, and a lot of people i want to inspire i want i say this one achieve your dreams through our dreams and leadership is not about leadership where you just say okay i have a designation i have a position i have a role no leadership is what the definition wise when your actions where your action inspires others to dream more to learn more to do more to become more when your action inspires others to that's a leadership and so i want to be i have been on that journey and i want to be that source and lot of people who must be listening i'm sure dr ramnan i'm on your behalf i'm telling them reach out to dr ramnan reach out to person like me yeah. we are a source and resource for you guys and and learn something and then do something and create something and that would take us to the next level for sure yeah that's a that's a book which i have a copy of it also too and i would more than happy to give them a free copy um i'm sure you can reach out to me on internet um, uh, on social media or i don't know uh, professor punit if you have a way to share with them my email address please do so i'm more than happy to send them a copy and and that's how it is um uh, for me to share this love share this creation share this leadership with other people so that they can really become one and then they can take care of the piece which is last piece missing for dr ramran's equation right i think he is doing everything and i want to come along with you dr ramran to create this whole ecosystem end to end in my way in a tiny little drop of the water in the bucket thank you so much jai thank you so ji definitely be in touch with you and see how we can work together on this yeah beautiful uh, thank you mr ji to uh, Dear all, uh, I would request you to see the kind of energy these two uh, eminent guests are having. Heart, mind, eyes, and tongue—all four are in sync. They all are synchronized. जो दिल में है, जो दिमाग में है, वही आँखों में है, वही ज़ुबान पे है. और फिर आप देख सकते हैं कि उन्होंने, they, uh, I mean, leadership through example they have established. Dr. Ramnan, he studied 
in IIT Mumbai and then serving TCS and then coming to government and uh, you know helping millions of people you know creating uh, uh, an environment for the new India for the bigger India and I mean this is uh, very well needed because we are having abundant uh, demographic dividend so uh, if we are unable to give the shape uh, or give the direction to these people this can be a, dem a demographic disaster as well so mr jeet coming back to you uh, uh, thank you for this uh, you know openness and uh, you know uh, helping uh, promising to help people now i'm coming to your big this the insight insights into creating abundance yeah if you and can please uh, share your experience yeah. on this book yeah, and so by the way, it's available on Amazon. You can go and look at it and inside into creating abundance. There's a Kindle a hard copy is not in India, but in the US side, we have been having a hard copy also too. My goal was this, like we can say, emerging a powerful human being to an inspirational leader. I really wanted to inspire people. They things rise and fall around leader. Um, Dr. Ramran talked about honorable prime minister. Um, I'm not biased on any political party and I don't care, honestly. But if you think about in you know, over the last seven or eight years, the, the conversation about country as India has been transformed all over the planet. The globe is looking at India as a country now. Why? Because you change the place of a leadership, you change the conversation. Um, and he has a lot of things to get better on, no doubt about that. But I have a clear idea where my mom used to cook food on, you know, atta, uh, ke kande lana, lakdi. Like, the, like, if think about when I see the Ujwal, uh, whatever the scheme, uh, Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister has created, so many people are, so many lives are being saved. Um, I'm giving you one example of many other things. And I can use brother uh, Abraham Lincoln, um, um, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam or Martin Luther King or Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi or anything um, and Nelson Mandela, all of them has created something for the masses and they transform the human beings. Um, my suggestion for people is to understand that things rise and fall around leader, whether it's a home or an organization or institute or a company. So I wanted to capture my thoughts that what made me, how do I emerge from a powerful human being to a powerful leader? And I capture some of those ideas and some of those thoughts in this book. And, and I, wanted to, I wanted to share that one with people. And that was my idea before writing this book. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jeet. Now, coming to uh, Dr. Ramanan. I mean, uh, for any parent or any teacher, it is difficult to have a litmus test whether the candidate is having any attributes uh, or aptitude for entrepreneurship. So if you can, can help us uh, in understanding how to how to check these uh, entrepreneurial uh, aptitude in any candidate. So um, I think it's a very, very good question. Um, in fact, one of the things that uh, we have just started um, is uh, an interaction program on, you know, for only for parents. ATL Parent Meet uh, is something that we are facilitating where the teacher, uh, we, we have for every adult tinkering lab and adult tinkering lab in charge, uh, we have one or two mentors associated and we have the parent of the student. And we are organizing a three-way uh, awareness and education about, you know, the the blossoming of the human being fully. It is not a question of just innovation. Right. It is a question of how do we allow the creative potential of every child to get unleashed and how do we not look upon uh, existing norms of society as a means of judgment of a child's capability. That is our problem. You know, we always compare Uska, unka, unka, ladka, dekho, he has scored so many marks. So, uh, I'm ashamed to send you to school, you know, all these very negative thinking and negative expressions and the child goes into uh, into a rut and, and finally, you know, just uh, uh, they become such a limited uh, human being. So we are trying to bring, so there is great education required for the parents and awareness building and also the 21st century skills, you know, how do we ensure that people understand? If your child is curious, we say that's a positive thing. So learn 
if he's asking so many, he or she is asking many questions, it is a very positive thing. Look at why he, why he or she is asking. That means it is a curious mind. It's an imaginative mind. If the person is wanting to explore a whole lot of stuff, you know, with a, a, a mechanical, some people are very good. You know, they'll put Lego blocks together. They'll put, you give them any uh, toy, they'll immediately want to dismantle it and uh, uh, reassemble it and so on. So you're, you're seeing a technical progress. Uh, some people are very interested in books and just reading. So that may be a research orientation and a book oriented. So we are telling the, the parents that you have to look at what is the child's, um, you know, automatically it is gravitating towards something over a period of time and allow that, don't, don't cut that off. Don't think that that is not relevant to the school and the exams. Don't cut it off because that will find expression and that will find, uh, you know, um, uh, it will find a fruit somewhere. So uh, this is one thing. The second is we run a tinkering marathon every year. And when you run the tinkering marathon, we tell everybody that we'll give them some ideas, uh, challenges in eight or 10 sectors and say, you identify a problem in that sector and you solve it, right? So we are not trying to give a problem and tell them to solve. In fact, we want to nurture this aspect of problem identification by themselves and then solving it themselves. And then we organize what is known as a marathon day in the school. In the marathon day, all the innovations done by the children, irrespective of whether they got completed or not, etc., that is on display. And the parents are invited, the teachers are invited, uh, alumni are invited and they are able to see what the teachers, students have created, you know. And that is when the parents start realizing, oh, this is my daughter and she has created this fantastic thing. And my son has created this. And they are so eager to explain, you know, you can, I, I've been, uh, when, whenever you get a chance, you should visit this marathon day happening in the school. They are so excited to explain about that innovation. Then the parent realizes that there is something in my child which I have not been seen, right. So uh, nothing like a, the opening up their eyes by seeing what, whatever they're doing. And finally, uh, we encourage the teachers also. The teachers and the principal is very important for them to allow the children to blossom and not, not tell them you have to go. This is a, there is one thing called discipline which is required, but there is another thing called restriction and putting the blinkers on and that should be removed. You know, you have to have discipline, but you have to have the freedom to think and to explore uh, and to and to nurture your talent. So these are all um, these are to be these are being taught in the school. We have a soft skills training for the teachers as well as for the mentors, uh, and and uh, a module where you know we are uh, building for the parents. And now you know what we did uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. We launched Tinker from Home modules because students are all sitting at home, and uh, we develop we launched game development modules. And we told the children that you can develop a game along with your parent. So you develop a game, we gave them the tools like Scratch and Construct and all that. And they're all developing uh, games now. Uh, many students have submitted their games. It is fantastic. And we have told them, you tell, tell us who all you involved because it's all cloud-based stuff. So uh, they have involved their parents, they have involved some family members who are taking interest. And, and, and I hope uh, all of this will have a very positive effect. So I think Guljar Saab ne barso pehle ek gana likha tha Tusse naraz nahi zindagi hairan hu mein Tere maasun sawalon se pareshan hu mein To bacho ke maasun sawalon se mein pareshan nahi hona hai Unhe sawal pushne ke liye aur prerit karna chahiye I think this is all the first institution home or parent should do I mean giving them uh, freedom I mean of course discipline should be taught at home first itself But uh, of course necessary freedom to ask questions और उनकी बातें उनके सवाल आपको बेवकूफी भरे लग सकते हैं लेकिन वो जरूरी है गलत से सही की जो यात्रा होती है एक्सप्लोरेशन की यात्रा में ये जरूरी होता है कि पहले करके कुछ गलत क्या है वो जान लें फिर सही भी जाना आसानी से जाना जा सकता है uh, access to the internet and as they say you know uh, just taking on gulzar's uh, this but the english saying uh, where there is great freedom there is also great responsibility right so with great freedom comes great responsibility and how do you ensure that that uh, is uh, inbuilt in a child's thinking so uh, mr jeet uh, most of society mein yahi kaha jata hai ki businessman ka beta business karega aur naukri karne wale ka नौकरी लेकिन अब वो वक्त बदल गया है और वो वक्त भी बदल गया है जब जैसे फिल्मों में कोई व्यक्ति हीरो बनने के लिए जाता था 
तो जब हीरो नहीं बन पाता था तब वो विलेन का रोल के लिए ऑप्ट करता था सो एंटरप्रेनरशिप हैज बीन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर मैनर कि पढ़ाई की फिर नौकरी करने के लिए कोशिशें की कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन दिए पर नौकरी नहीं मिली तो चलो आप कुछ छोटा मोटा व्यवसाय या अपना शॉप शुरू कर देते हैं कुछ काम शुरू कर देते हैं दिस यूज टू बी दूड ऑफ सोसाइटी पीपल दो जर्नी फॉर बिजनेस for the initial days of their life till the time they do not get success people used to treat them that they he is doing he or she is doing a you know a lesser important job i mean work naukri zyada behtar hai so entrepreneurship is in blood or it can be acquired through training mr yeah. ji yeah, i tell you like i was sharing about my father when i was growing up he was very young when he passed away i had zero blood of a business as such right like literally i had no one um if you think about the kind of business i am doing see entrepreneurship happen either in when you are inspired like in be either by inspiration or in desperation so the thing which you talk about the desperation is when job is gone you don't have a now you are desperate let let's go business kar lete hain or you are really gotten by it and then you want to start something because you want to make a contribution so entrepreneurship entrepreneurship happen either through inspiration or in desperation i don't believe that it is in the blood um but what i shared few minutes ago about you need to know why you want to be entrepreneur see the entrepreneur journey is a long lonely and a dark journey and i mean it like like i remember like 11 years we are inching toward 12 years by now so many days when i used to open a shop like chitrakoot pe vaishali nagar mein subah subah jaate the to ek chhota sa basement tha uska taala kholna hai aapko khol ke andar jana hai aur main hp mein tha to i had about again dr ramran bhat for tcs of large companies we used to like i have used to have 120 to 150 people team under me and now wahan se chhod ke aap jaipur mein aaye ek chhota sa kamra leke reh rahe hain ek chote basement mein aapne apni company start ki hai अब वो लगता है क्यों कर रहे हो भाई यार आप क्या प्रॉब्लम क्या है अच्छा खासा काम चल रहा था और तुम यहां पर बैठे क्यों तो बट आई वाज सो इंस्पायर्ड दैट ऐसे जीवन से नहीं जाएंगे कुछ करके जाएंगे नहीं कुछ लाइक कुछ करना है कुछ कुछ कंट्रीब्यूशन करना है सो आई थिंक आई वुड आई डोंट बिलीव इन एनीथिंग इन लाइक यू डेफिनेटली यू माइट हैव सर्टेन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक यू गेट थ्रू योर जेनेटिक डीएनए कॉन्फिगरेशन but i think entrepreneurship required a zeal a commitment a a body of steel where you need to be clear that why you are doing because things are going to become difficult as you go through things becomes hard um if things become tough and then at that time if tough is not going um then you just really going to fall short and you say ah bahut ho gaya ab chalo wapas naukri pe chalte hain now you need to understand that it's a long lonely and a dark but then there is a light there is always a light at the end of the tunnel you need to have a patience i share about you need to have a perseverance you need to be peaceful you need to take care of your family members this is like i was having a two kids and my wife and you need to create a structure tum to chalo theek hai bhaiya entrepreneur banna hai abhi family ka kya karna hai yaar right so you need to take care of them also too you need to make sure they are behind you you need to take care of your health and fitness you need to have a vibrancy um because hours and hours of work 12 hours 15 hours 16 hours sometimes 18 hours of work you need to put in and if you don't have that kind of physical stamina you will be tired so all that stuff which i can talk about uh, i can see entrepreneur anyone can be entrepreneur and those who are listening to it i really want to inspire people to become entrepreneur because dr ramran jo baat kar rahe hain unko bahut sare entrepreneur chahiye main to ek chhota sa hu right now so why not we say really support him and entrepreneurship there is so many benefit so much fruits of the labor you will get um look at like right now my kid my son is going to uc berkeley here think you you take care of your near next generation you change the trajectory of your life your next generation after generation life you can change um and you can become someone who can inspire people also too so there are a lot of fruits of the labor but then you need to put the labor first and you need to have a stamina to put it both physical social mental financial all that needs to come along <clears throat> thank you mr jeet now coming to uh, dr ramran i mean uh, in in previous one of the sessions you elaborated the meaning of startup i mean it was really self explanatory you know uh, that meaning of startup 
uh, may I request you to please uh, uh, explain it again uh, for our new audiences? Sure, sure. Yeah, so, you know, the, the word startup itself, uh, from my own point of view, is very self-explanatory. For the, the S stand, uh, stands for solutions, right? You, uh, a startup starts with a solution, a solution which is scalable and a solution which can have an impact and a solution to a problem that has not been solved before. So that's where the innovation part comes in. And unless you have, so you, it starts off with an idea, but that idea is to look at a problem and it is solving the problem and that problem has to be solved uh, to create a real impact. Uh, so this element should go, uh, should, should be there in the solution. The T stands for technology. You know, you need to, today we are living in a world where technology is, is available and advanced and affordable. And so you have to integrate technology in the solution, not necessarily in the solution itself. Sometimes, you may, like he said, you can have a process-based uh, startup, you can have a service-oriented startup, you can have a, a product-oriented startup. That is, that is not a point. The point is, how do you leverage technology for the purposes of making that startup successful? So either you integrate technology into it, uh, which becomes makes it very powerful, or you leverage technology like the internet or 3D, uh, 5G technologies or communication uh, or IoT and so on and so forth, whatever be the reason to, uh, for marketing purposes, for distribution purposes, for communication purposes, for internal IT system purposes and so on. The third element is uh, you, a startup starts with ability, right? You have some ability, you are a, you are a smart guy, uh, you are an intelligent person, you have come up with an innovative idea, but that ability has to translate itself into agility. And that agility has to translate itself into an action plan. Agility is not possible without an action plan because you need to be extremely responsive. A startup is in a very competitive world. You know, uh, you're not a big company. So a little balance here and there can can uh, tip the scale for you and, and you may decide that I'm going to stop doing it. So uh, you have to be extremely agile uh, that means alertness and agility comes with having the right tools uh, and having the right uh, uh, action plan. You know, many ideas, you have a great idea, you have a dream, you should dream big, but you don't have an action plan to back it up, it will not happen. The fourth, the, the R stands for re-engineer. You have to continuously re-engineer your solution and you have to reiterate because you never get it the first time uh, right. And it is not possible. Uh, take the iPhone, the way the iPhone has evolved in the last 10 years, every year two to one release or two release, uh, there is a software release, there is a hardware release, and it, and it has evolved to what it has become today. So you have to continuously re-engineer and reiterate, and that is uh, until you get a solution that is really scalable and, and is having an impact. And at the same time, you cannot stop that because soon competition will get, it will reach you. So you have to be ahead of the competition. So the re-engineering, re, re uh, is, is a very important company. Then you again come to the next T, which is the team. You have to have the right team. If you don't have the right team, and as uh, G, G said, you know, you're the CEO or you're the CTO or are you the CFO or are you the chief marketing officer or are you the chief digital officer? You have to have the right team. You cannot be everything to, to in that startup. And many times startups have this problem. The founder, you know, he thinks he knows everything. and that can become the decline and fall of the startup. You have to know, you have to surround yourself with people better than you. In areas that you are not fully competent on, you have a certain competency, you let that competency blossom, but allow others who are better than you in certain areas to help you and build the right team. And then the U stands for uniqueness. Your solution, your approach to the market, your customer differentiation has to be unique. Your, the way you organize your internal systems has to be unique. If the uniqueness is not there, then you don't have the differentiation. If you don't have the differentiation, then competition will eat you up. So you need uniqueness in your approach, in your solution, in your, in your marketing, in your people, in your HR approach and all that. And the P finally stands for persistence. You have to be very persistent. In the startups world, like I said, there is no success. There is only success or there is a first attempt in learning. And that is possible only with a persistent approach and persistence is possible only with passion if you don't have passion you will not find the ability to be persist to be persistent so uh, and and finally the s in startups stands for societal impact whatever you do remember 
that unless you are creating something good for the society and it is having a societal impact or through your startup at some level at some point in its life cycle at some point in its growth you are able to give back to the society your your startup will become a sustainable startup it will grow into a beautiful company it will become a unicorn it can become a multinational organization so uh, everything is captured in that word startup so you don't have to look elsewhere just go back and i, I think that's the formula for success for any startup thank you dr ramnan i'm sure aapne abhi tak iska patent nahi karwaya mai i'm going to use this for a social media slide for yeah. our young students yeah sure. uh, so i'm receiving lot many compliments from uh, learned people dr jaswin kaur has mentioned great insight uh, insightful inputs i mean dr am zahir ahmed has said great panelists discussion real time innovation real time innovation experience uh one important question again from dr uh, mr ravi sir should sandwich training course theoretical and practical semesters alternatively will with innovation and nearest community be implemented in practical semesters should i repeat sir no i i can talk about that one quick one i got that but like please, because please, because what we have done in the final year students right now in different various colleges we went and we talk with those those um university heads our plus uh, placement chief place, placement officers um and we said and i think it is becoming a quite a norm now that in india we said that why you want to keep your student inside the institute right now in college why not you send it to us in a final year right and so we have created a stipend program we have given them a head start about what it takes to work in a company how do you innovate we are creating a e cell in our company right now called entrepreneur cell um where we are finding some of these kids who are coming out from colleges those really want to be entrepreneurs they and and we are saying okay sure why not you do one thing you learn with us you grow with us you create with us and as long as you stay with us make a contribution here and then eventually you can go and build we'll mentor and coach you we need more entrepreneurs so right now we have hired last year 70 uh, college graduate and all 70 are final year students still they have not been graduated and for last one year almost they are working with us and we are growing them along with us so coming back to what mr ravi is asking is it a good idea um i don't know whether it's a good idea to all the time transforming back and forth but at least some portion of the degree some portion of the degree has to be converted with the real implementation of the degree knowledge and that will do wonders for kids um and that platform should be created on a more prevailing basis rather than only on occasional and pocket is right now right uh, very well said mr jeet kumar aict is also coming on these lines as and when there is a need in industry um, for interns for the projects they are trying to uh, blend the curriculum according to and, the need of industry and, and, and so that summer summer ka jo training hota na 3 mahine ka do mein people will come they just want to get a certificate they just want to you know project and wo kuch nahi ho gaya no there is a, like a lesser is time is short and for them also they are not interested um converting a curriculum where we make is a mandatory like for example doctors we create doctor when they pass out from mbbs they have to go through the internship they have to go through the residency um to a, before they can really become a formal doctor i think we need to create that for our technologist people who are coming out from college we need to provide a platform but then industry also need to come along as much as student needs to come along government needs to come along industry needs to come along also too um and so i'll give it back to dr ramnan if um but that's what i have tiny bit of piece of what our company is doing and i'm sure you must be hearing from other people also too you know i totally agree uh, there has to be in it is worthwhile for example for one of the semesters to be completely practical training uh, and giving the exposure to companies i think some universities are doing that i know bits pilani does it uh, bits pilani actually has two semesters in their four years where they uh, make the students go and work in a company so the entire semester they are there and which is a great thing you know and that is considered to be part of the educational curriculum so uh, it would be wonderful if uh, or more and more universities start adopting that uh yeah thank you dr ramanan 
this is one another quick question from Dr. Bidyadar. All the discussions are for young entrepreneurs. Can anyone start entrepreneurship in middle age, like 40 or 50 years? It does. By the way, there's a whole whole uh, data is there. People who are young start the company, they are hungry, they are motivated, but they are not mature. Um, and and the whole studies are there that the, the best people who have created a like a unicorn to a long term you know, sustainable mainstream companies are aged between 35 to 45. Um, that's the whole study. So initial, the failure rate is higher. Um, but then as you get mature, your your mental development is there. And you are going to use that wisdom and maturity to be a lot more, lot more comprehensive um, uh, in your in your approach. So definitely, there are many examples out there. Like, and you know, we talk about KFC, uh, that human being is started in the age of 65. Um, there are people who have started companies like I started in 2006, uh, 2009. Uh, 2006, I came back to India, so I was 37, 38 years old um, when we started this journey. Um, and so, uh, definitely, I see there is a time, there is a vision jago is in Savera. That's what I would say, right? No time particular to do this time. So, I don't know, Dr. In fact, when we look at, when I look at many startups which are there, they're not necessarily startups only with uh, young, young students. Uh, our incubators, uh, we tell them you invite startups from anywhere, you know, in that community, from that university or even from outside. And there are quite a few people who, in fact, people who have been able to accomplish some minimal things that they have wanted to accomplish in life, they are ready to take the plunge, they should take the plunge, you know. And I, I would say uh, age is never a bar for entrepreneurship because it is all about mindset and it is all about your thinking. As long as you are young in your thinking, as long as you are energetic in your thinking, then uh, all of these things are possible. And I, I do want to say that Atul Innovation Mission itself is an entrepreneurial unit. It is like a startup. You know, it, it didn't exist uh, three years ago. I have only a team of about 20 people uh, working with me today. When we started off, there were only four people. And and today we are 20 people. And with 20 people, you are you are still able to accomplish quite a lot. Of course, the support of government and all is there. But we have... I mean, coming from a company like TCS, which is 400,000 people, right? Running a company like CMC, which was 12,000 to 15,000 people uh, at, at, uh, at a point in time. And then coming and running an organization with 20 people, you need to have a different mindset altogether when, when you run these organizations, right? And you have to become entrepreneurial in your thinking, uh, what you are used to, a big support system to support you, and suddenly you come and you find that you have to, you know, uh, not only be uh, a chief executive officer, but you probably have to be the programmer also at some point in time. You know, you have to be the, the person who is uh, uh, interacting and the chief marketing guy and everything. So I think, uh, you know, I, I really, ex um, I, I would really urge anyone who has, uh, who wants to do something and, and as Mr. Jeet said, it is, you want to leave an impact, right? You want to create something and leave an impact. And if you have that urge in you, just go ahead and do it. You're going to succeed. There is no failure at all. You are going to succeed. Dr. Raman, if you can please mention uh, if a couple of success stories of AIC or uh, ACIC. Yeah, in fact, we, we have now 70 um, incubators operational out of the 102. The remaining will become operational over the course of the year. Uh, out of the 70 incubators, we already have 1500 plus startups which are operational, fully operational, right? Many of them uh, have actually, one of the ways uh, we, we have developed a real-time dashboard so that all the star incubators can measure themselves on how they are progressing. Uh, and we have built it on the lines of the balance scorecard because I, in the, being in the corporate world, balance scorecard is something which is very useful, a very useful tool. So we have got a set of uh, lead parameters and we have got a set of lag parameters. Uh, lead parameters are telling us or telling the incubator whether things are, you know, you have the right activities going on, the right set of input parameters which will lead to an outcome. Outcome parameters are uh, how many startups you are able to, uh, you know, you know, incubate, uh, how many of them are graduating within a period of two years, uh, what is the external funding that you have been able to leverage because of the uh, incubator and because of the connections and so on, how many jobs have got created, how many patents have got, so we got a list of 
parameters which they continuously measure. And the input parameters is how many outreach events are you conducting? How are you attracting and nurturing startups? What is the support systems that you are enabling? How many partnerships you have developed with VC community, with the uh, research labs, with the CSIR, I mean, all, all of that. So with all of this, you are doing, it is very suggestive to the incubator what you should do in order to become successful and how should you measure uh, the outcome so that you, you know that you're on the path of success or you need to do some course corrections. So this is the way. Uh, quite a few, in fact, in this COVID-19 crisis, uh, we solicited solutions from the startup community and you would be amazed, uh, Puneet, 1,500 ready to deploy preventive assistive solutions were offered by the startup community. And that was amazing because just in a period of four weeks, we got 1,500 plus solutions out of which we have shortlisted about 100 of them and we are providing them manufacturing support, financial support, supply chain management support and so on, so that they can be deployed and they can be scaled. And these involve three, you know, uh, masks, uh, ventilators, test kits, um, uh, contact tracing solutions, uh, hygiene solutions and so on. And it was amazing also to see that many of our startups pivoted to COVID-19 related solutions using some technology that they had already been developing. So if they had already been doing some AI related stuff, they used it and pivoted it to create contact tracing solutions and so on. Uh, some of them were uh, uh, in the textile, you know, textile startups which were there. They convert, they immediately pivoted to create these masks and ventilators and so on. So uh, it is amazing to see, uh, you know, uh, how they pivoted. Because a startup in today's world, in the COVID-19 world, two things are required. One, how do they pivot to the COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 scenario? Right? And those are big opportunities out there. And how do they pivot to grabbing those opportunities or and leveraging what they have already developed uh, in, in the, or patented uh, for that purpose? Second is they have to extend their cash runway. Otherwise, they will, uh, you know, uh, we don't know how long these lockdowns will, will continue. So you have to extend your cash runway to at least six months or nine months so that your core team, so you have to become innovative in your operation. You have to do more with less. And how do you do that? So for all of this, we at Athel Innovation Mission are conducting a series of programs, webinars and all of that, so that they, you know, there is a, a great people, you know, speakers who are coming, who are speaking about it and so on. And in Adil Tinkering Labs, you may, as you know, more than 5,000 labs are operational. When, when we selected 100, the top 100 Tinkering Marathon winners, then we give them what is known as a student innovation program right where they learn more about innovation and how to become a startup later on and out of that we selected eight of the innovations they have become products which are now being registered on amazon so you'd be amazed school students having created products which are on amazon now i was i was listening to what you were sharing uh, dr ramran i was just like want to um, not only congratulate you for such a big effort but also look at the commandable progress you have made um, really commendable progress you have made and I'm so proud of what you are doing, what you are up to and your team and uh, such a uh, grassroots level difference and contribution um, you are making. And so it makes me feel my heart becomes warm. I was sharing earlier, my blood flows much faster in my veins when I see some of the like 400 product coming out from the strengths in Amazon is a progress of that. That's where the country is moving. Okay, so I want you to really know how much um, happy a person like me as an entrepreneur becomes when I hear some of these success stories. And then people who are listening to the audience, and I want everyone to really get it. Um, we are at a different point in life now. Uh, country at a different juncture. Um, and I think if people like people like Dr. Ramnan who can push through and people like us can come, come along, um, we can create the future of India. We can definitely create that future. Thank you, Dr. Ramlan and uh, Mr. Jeet, uh, all viewers, those who have raised their queries, uh, they have extended their thanks. Now coming to uh, Mr. Jeet, this is uh, this is the second last question. Uh, the upcoming or new areas for uh, startup or entrepreneurship? Mr. Jeet. Yes, definitely. And I think what I can see, the world is moving from a desktop monolithic single instance view to anytime, anywhere, on any device view. 
um, and what does it mean? Um, I'll give you a simple um, example of where, what the areas of technology, which like not only technology, innovative part of it. I was flying from um, from San Francisco to Dubai on a flight, um, and I was amazed. You are sitting at a 37,000 feet above the ground, and you are doing your invoicing to your customers where you are attend. You have a internet on a flight. You have a QuickBooks which is on a cloud. I had my mobile phone where I was accessing all of that, and I was doing things on a 15 hours flight while sitting in the cloud. And in a virtual cloud and also literal cloud. Um, so if you think about in the world where it is going, it is going where anytime, any device, any where, and I need a meaningful data. So you talk about uh, IoT connectivity, right? Anywhere you need to divide. You talk about cloud. Um, you talk about um, big data. You you talk about VR, virtual reality, and you talk about AI, and you talk about machine learning, and you talk about data. There's so many things. Uh, and this, I'm talking about technology, but then you can use all of that to solve the real problems. A problem such as how do I connect farmers? Like if you think about how do I connect villages and farmers to the real world where they can learn by in a local language, learn how to do the harvesting. Um, is, it a, is what anytime, anywhere on any device view. Um, and I can go on and on, whether transportation, whether healthcare, whether retail, whether um, a aviation, whether um, technology like we're talking about telecom. There are various places, uh, education to healthcare to telecom to, um, to you name it. Uh, that's what I can say. Um, so in the 21st centuries where we are is, remember though, if you can solve the problem for two reasons, easy to use and save time. Time is limited for human being on this planet, right? Like given the time is 100 years, right? And we, if we are lucky to live that much, that many years. But if we can help people to solve the problem where they rather than using, if rather than spending a two hours, if we can let them do in two minutes, then they can use one hour, 58 minutes to love the people they want to love. They can spend time that they want to spend on. And in those two minutes also, I don't need to juggle things. My mind doesn't want to spend a tons of, you know, mind brain power to solve the problem. So I always look at ease of use and save time. And if you can do those two things and anywhere, anytime on any device, and I need a meaningful things, you do that, you'll be all set. Thank you, Mr. Jeet. Here is a question uh, from Basit Nisar Loan uh, from Kashmir. Uh, in Kashmir, we do not have much tech firms here uh, where we can go for internship. My question is, do we have any government sponsored programs where we can go for internship? Bashit, uh, recently AICT has launched uh, a portal named as Tulip. I'm sure you'll be able to find out a uh, lot many opportunities uh, as of now. Uh, more than uh, one lake eighty thousand internship uh, are, internships are available on this portal. Uh, please help yourself. Uh, I'm sure you will be able to uh, get something for you. Uh, may I request uh, our guests to uh, you know if any case if they have any information or data regarding this. No, I think um, uh, you know like you said, AICT is enabling that and. Um, also, uh, internships are possible uh, today. More and more government agencies are also very interested in internship uh, from young professionals. I know that many ministries are taking in young professionals as as interns, uh, so that they can, if people who are interested in uh, either innovation, entrepreneurship, policy related stuff, and so on. And um, uh, where did he say the person is from? From Kashmir. Uh, Kashmir, yeah. And we, we have uh, actually in Kashmir, we have uh, set up now, we're setting up an incubator in EDI, uh, uh, Entrepreneurial Development Institute. So they'll be one of the first Athel incubators, which will, uh, which is, I mean, they have been already selected and awarded. I think they are setting it up right now. So I'm sure they can do some internships since there also. Thank you, sir. Josh or Hosh, ye combination na ho. 
तो सक्सेस की जगह फेलियर भी हो सकती है फेलियर रेट स्टार्टअप्स की बहुत हाई है मैं रिक्वेस्ट फर्स्ट विद मिस्टर जीत एंड देन डॉक्टर रामनन डूज एंड डोंट्स फॉर अ स्टार्टअप एंड द मैसेज फॉर सोशल एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप तो बिगिन विद मिस्टर जीत या सो आई थिंक व्हाट आई वुड लाइक टू डू आवर डूज एंड डोंट्स डोंट स्टार्ट एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप टू मेक मनी आई थिंक मनी इज अ बाय प्रोडक्ट बट मनी शुड नॉट बी द फोकस आई थिंक द फोकस शुड बी द इंपैक्ट एंड द कंट्रीब्यूशन यू वांट टू मेक um because if that is not there and if you are starting a company to make money sooner or later you are going to hit a wall um because then then, then your decision making your thought process is always going to go how much i have made can did i make enough what it is what it is not you are going to nickel and dime you are going to think differently but if you are thinking about you are starting because i want to make a contribution i want to make a difference and there is just like a car you don't buy a car to to have a petrol you need a petrol to run the car but you don't buy a car to buy a petrol so you need to know that entrepreneurship is like a car and money is like a petrol um and you need to have a gas to run the car but but you don't want to have that petrol uh, as a focus area and then once you are in the car you need to where the journey is where the car is going how far it is going to go and you need to enjoy and you need to know the destination milestone so my first major thing about do's and don't don't start entrepreneurship because you are focusing on money do that one because you want to make a contribution and impact another one is you cannot be a lone warrior uh, and entrepreneurship if you are the only one who are thinking that i will do you are going to again set yourself for a failure as a challenge because now you need a team you need to learn how to build team um so you need to have a good leadership skills you need to build you need to know how to build teams so do learn those skill don't don't believe that you are going to do it alone um right and then third you need to have a some kind of an idea which is either a product or service see without product and service you cannot be an entrepreneur you need to know what you are selling um you need to have something to sell where people are willing to pay um so if you don't have anything then don't start at least some level of understanding you need to have what you are going to sell which people are going to willing to pay so those are the do's and don'ts with regard to social entrepreneurship i would say this one this is i truly believe if you are not doing this one for cause of money and if you are doing your cause of making a difference a contribution every entrepreneurship is social entrepreneurship um in the world of social entrepreneur you don't need to be in the villages you don't need to solve the problem for farmers or healthcare no you are creating abundance of jobs that itself is a social cause like you think about each direct job create a five indirect job or more um so in our world when i look at it for 450 jobs we have created over the last 12 years 11 years or so and each jobs created probably five um another job so you can think about there is a kind of 3000 4000 jobs we have created in that process and that adds the value um overall 100 crore rupees company we are bringing the foreign ex- exchange to the country uh, where we are paying salary dobi wala kana kana wala you know house sale this each shops chai wala dukan wala kullad wala all these people are really you need to really spend money on and that you are uplifting you are bringing people out of the poverty by creating abundance of jobs and that itself is a social entrepreneurship in my world um so as long as you are not doing it for money as long as you are not doing for greed as long as you are not after that part i think every entrepreneurship is social entrepreneurship um and so and, and also i want to say quick last thing i really want to see india needs entrepreneurship i would say do it and there are so many people looking for a job there are few people who are providing the job why only multinational companies are coming and setting up their shops and then creating those jobs why not we have a world of reliance and tatas and birlas why not we have other companies are coming along and supporting the creation of the government which through like a adal innovation mission and other initiatives is going on why are we not putting the last end of that puzzle of the equation to create the end to end creation okay so those those are some of my thoughts um and i'm just so, so excited um and we want to create more um so you can see i'm just like going out right now right i want to talk a lot more because this is what the world needs this is what india needs this is what human beings needs 
I am sure, Mr. Uh, Ji, that today's session, uh, that this interaction is really very fruitful. Our घड़ी देखने की जरूरत नहीं रही हमको. We just carried away. बात में से बात निकलती गई. नई नई बातें हैं. लोगों के भी सवाल बहुत interesting आते रहे. Before I ask this last question with Dr. Ramnan, do's and don'ts for a startup and message for social entrepreneurship. There is one uh, question from Dr. Ramita. uh what is the role of media and communication in your vision and mission dr ramnathan well, i mean this is a hit question from my side also <laughs> <laughs> see uh, media and communication is absolutely key you know when if you want your idea to succeed first and foremost somebody also should understand what your idea is all about and why they they should become stakeholders in your success and they can only become stakeholders in your success with the right communication with the right media attention with the right focus on disseminating the message about what this is all about what is it that you are trying to do because many times a great idea if not communicated properly will just go fall by the wayside and that will be a tragic uh, waste of a good idea so media communications is very important at the same time it needs to be very responsible because sometimes you end up hyping up your product to an extent that if when it falls it will fall flat and you should not you know you should not end up um, um hyping it or overusing media or communication to convey a wrong expectation uh, to either the end user or or to anybody and that that is also dangerous because you start slipping into uh, zones of wanting to you know uh, for the image to be ahead of the reality and an image ahead of the reality uh, often takes a severe beating if that distance becomes and you you have to you have to be uh, you have to be able to see what can come in the future and you should be able to talk about it but you should also at the same time uh, do it in a very responsible manner because i have seen many companies who engage over engage in social media or over engage in in communication and then end up uh, you know not being what they profess to be so that's very important but it is very key and and the other thing i always tell my team is every person in the team is a media person every person in the team is a communication person you cannot if you want to even sell your idea to me within the team you have to have a good communication skill i mean you are a sales person every person is a sales person by by that definition because you have to be able to convey and convince uh, even to your boss that we need to do this if you need additional budget unless you are able to communicate very effectively and very rationally and very intelligently uh, you will not be able to convince the boss so uh, and and the same thing is true to the outside world and now coming to the question part do's and don'ts for a startup and your message for social entrepreneurship so um, i'd like to uh, you know say uh, focus on the word dream um, abdul kalam ji said you know dream big and you'll achieve great things dream small and you'll be limited by your own dreams and i think in a startup world this ability to dare to dream and dream to dare this is very important so you should dare to dream and you should dream to dare because you are taking on you are uh, it, it's a very courageous decision to become an entrepreneur it's not an easy decision like you said you have to uh, drive you know you have to walk a lonely road many times and you will be uh, you will be assaulted with a lot of doubts not only from your within yourself but even many other people will be expressing you know your parents may be saying why are you doing this get a good job you are such an intelligent guy you will get a high paying job and so on and so forth and you are sacrificing all of that and you are saying i want to become an entrepreneur but that can only happen when you dare to dream and you dream to die and I, i second thing is you realize your own potential you have to fully realize your own potential uh, every startup person you know entrepreneur should realize that they have tremendous potential and how do i unleash that for that you have to have tremendous belief in yourself as vivekananda said if you have belief in thousand gods and goddesses and do not have belief in yourself you are doomed so i think this a startup should take vivekananda's words in mind that have strong belief in yourself when you have strong belief in yourself and in your idea then you will realize a full potential the third is have dream but have an action plan don't just be in the world of dreams right have an action plan 
that is going to translate your dream into a reality. So that's a do. You and and continuously refine this action plan. So if you want to continuously refine this action plan, you need to measure everything that you do. Measure, monitor, and continuously improve. So that's a do. Many people don't measure. They they are always thinking, oh, everything is going on the right track. But if you start measuring, you you are you are driven by data driven decisions. Then you will succeed tremendously. And the ability for you to be able to uh, meet commitments that you know you when you make a commitment, you have to meet it. Startups uh, should ensure you know they make commitments to the investor, they'll make commitment to the customer, they'll make commitments to uh, their people. Make commitments which you can deliver. Because when you meet your commitments, people start believing in you, and then they will start investing in you. And in a startup world, that is very important. People should say when they look at this, "No, I trust this guy. He makes his commitment. When he says he's going to do something, he actually does it." So uh, these are all the do's. Don't say, uh, "Don't give up." You know, I, I uh, in a startup world, if you give up, that's the end. So don't give up. And uh, as uh, the poem goes. Success is failure turned inside out, a silver tint in the clouds of doubt. You never know how close you are. You may be near while it seems so far. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. So I think I would just say the don't is is that part, and um, I'm sure every startup will succeed. In terms of social innovation, I think uh, uh, G G gave a brilliant answer. If you make an impact, that is the social cause itself. You know, you create jobs. That is a social cause. Uh, make sure that you are doing everything with integrity and ethics. That is very important because integrity and ethics define social behavior. So, social causes uh, you you are automatically promoting social causes when you work with integrity and with uh, ethics. And uh, you know, that's one thing I've learned at the Tata Group. Uh, how much they give importance to leadership with trust. You know, the trust. Component is so important, and society functions on trust. That if they support you, you are going to support them in some manner, and you have you owe it to them. You have to give it back to them in some manner, and you may do it through your company, which is creating jobs, through your product, which is creating a positive impact, and which is and through your service, uh, which is required at a you know at, at at whatever level of service that you are providing. So uh, social innovation is very important. But social innovation is all about society benefiting, and if society benefits in whatever way through your commercial venture, through a social venture, through an NGO venture, so be it. Uh, but make an impact, and then the money, as he says, will automatically flow. I think I want to say so a quick one. I just quick one say, serving other people is the rent you pay to live on this planet. Correct. Um, I think one has to really think about other human beings, um, and then collective human being make the society. So serving the society is the rent you pay for living on this planet. Um, I think we all should really think about that aspect of it because I'm gotten by it. Dr. Ramnan is gotten by it, and I think um, I'm just so so gotten by the fact that we have a platform where we can talk both of us. So Professor Puneet, before you end, I want to say thank you for. Providing the opportunity to, I'm sure, and Dr. Ramana is great Thank to meet you. It's just like it's a pleasure, is yeah. We'll 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 definitely be in touch and see how to uh, build on it further. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, our both uh, eminent uh, panelists and guests. It was wonderful session. I, I hope we are able to cover up all the aspects of the topic today uh, for innovation and startups. Our Bachi is very interesting. Thi ki, uh, we are talking for more than two hours and fifteen minutes. Or abhi bhi lag raha hai ki baat kuch raha gaya hai. Lekin thodi si book raja na English program ke liye zaruri hai. So I'm sure uh, in the coming times, whenever it is feasible uh, to come together to have another discussion on this particular topic, I'm sure the same cooperation will be able to. Get from our uh, panelists, and might be we can have more panelists to, in the discussion, and we can have some more uh, questions pre, uh, you know, uh, pre poll questions, so that we can include them. Uh, we can design the whole program in this particular manner. And this is all uh, for today. And जाते चलते चलते यही कहूँगा कि अगर अपनी ज़िंदगी के लिए कुछ बड़ा करना चाहते हैं, 
तो लोगों के बारे में सोचना शुरू कीजिए लोगों के लिए करना शुरू कीजिए आपकी लाइफ खुद ब खुद बड़ी हो जाएगी दिस इज ऑल फॉर टूडे ओवर टू डॉक्टर नीतू uh thank you all for the very effective deliberations uh, it was uh, really wonderful listening to both the eminent personalities in the area of innovation and startup and uh, i now request our registrar mj professor h ravi shankar kamat to propose the vote of thanks please sir um, good evening sir on the behalf of manipal university jaipur i would like to express my gratitude to dr ramnan ramanathan mission director atal innovation mission and additional secretary niti ayog government of india for blessing us with his gracious presence and extend heartfelt thanks to him for sharing the valuable insights on this occasion you are really an encyclopedia of entrepreneurship sir i would like to thank uh, mr jeet kumar co-founder and ceo in time tech global software solution company for enlightening us with the word of wisdom <laughs> We also thankful to Professor Puneet Sharma, a known TV anchor for DD National, for conducting this webinar so effectively and so lively. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Professor G K Prabhu, President M U J, for all all-round support in conducting this webinar. Most importantly, sincere thank to Professor Anand Sharma, Pro President M U J, for conceiving this idea to conduct this webinar, which is very apt. in the era of digital transformation and all his team member especially director of admissions professor r k gupta for handling this webinar smoothly and effectively finally i thank all the participant for this wonderful session thank you very much thank you thank you sir now with this we come to the end of the second webinar in the leadership webinar series but uh, before we end uh, we ha i have few announcements to make The e-certificate shall be issued to all the registered attendees. You will receive the e-certificates over emails, similar to how you received your registration confirmation and joining links. The email will have the link to download your respective certificate. These emails will be sent to you by tomorrow evening. Before we call it a day, let me have the privilege to announce the details of the next webinar, which is going to be held on 20th of June 2020. The topic would be Life from the Prism of Literature. and our guest would be no no one else but shri amish tripathi an indian diplomat columnist and world renowned author so please do join the webinar thank you once again for being a part of this webinar i along with our panel members and team mj sign up for now looking forward for your active participation in the next webinar